From hot spots to hidden gems and a sprinkle of glitz and glamour, this is your guide to all things local, the LA unscripted way from the Beverly Wilshire Penthouse Suite. The drama, the comedy. No, I'm not talking about an episode of LA Unscripted. It's Hollywood's biggest night, and we are feeling golden for Oscar. Hi, everyone. I'm Dana Devon, and in honor of the big show, we decided to make ourselves right at home at an Oscar worthy location the Beverly Wilshire Penthouse Suite of Four Seasons Hotel. You might recognize it from this small little movie. Pretty Woman. Yep, the iconic film was shot right here. And in 1991, Julia Roberts earned a Best Actress nomination for that role. So maybe that means there's a trophy in my future? The movie Pretty Woman has really given us an identity. It's part of our history. It's, it's part of our story. When you say you're going to the Beverly Wilshire, I think what that movie did, it, it brings this expectation, this fantasy, and, and it's the ability for this hotel to bring some of those bucket list experiences to life. So whether they want to recreate the elevator scene, whether they want to do the jewelry scene on Rodeo Drive, there's too many options to be able to relive, and we're, we're so happy to be able to have it. So uh, coming out of the pandemic, we were fortunate enough um, to be able to uh, upgrade all of our rooms and suites here in the hotels. We're brand new, we're ready to go, and we're excited to be able to welcome our guests back to the hotel. This hotel offers so much from our staff, from the experiences, um, from our locale, the large amount of suites that we have here. If you want that space, if you want that celebration, if you want to be outside on your balcony, your footsteps from Rodeo, and everything is within reach. This is going to be wonderful. We're going to serve it a nice pink. We have an exclusive cut with us. This is red wine Kobe from the Hyogo Prefecture in Japan. The cut is the spot for so many reasons. You know, uh, unique cuts of beef from around the world. Some of the best wagyu and seafood being cooked by Chef Drew inside of the restaurant. Craft cocktails in the newly renovated cut lounge. My favorite preparation is actually to serve this with some Japanese wasabi that we get flown in twice a week with a shark skin grater, it's the traditional way to serve it. The Pretty Women drink is, a, is an icon here in the Boulevard. It's the Feeling Pretty cocktail. It's, it's obviously styled after the, the movie. People travel from all over the world to come and get their Pretty, pretty Woman experience. I think we sell over 4,000 of those cocktails every single year. It's a great vibe. It's really a, a, a fantastic experience to come during the wood season. So we have uh, up in our spa, you can get red carpet ready. Uh, Jillian, our lead therapist up there, is really fantastic at, uh, at having that connection and, and making our guests ready for the big night. Yeah, the Boulevard uh, restaurant and the bar in there really comes alive. And uh, there's a TV up in behind the area. Heard all about this sabering. Yes, Now, yes. what is sabering? So sabering is a way of opening champagne bottles that was invented by the French back in the 1400s. So the story goes, the most important figure in Champagne history, the Widow Clicquot, would actually host Napoleon and his soldiers. And as a thank you at the very end of their stay, they would take their swords and cut off the tops of Champagne to give her what's called a Champagne salute. And this is just something, like this is just a thing you guys do here. Yeah. Absolutely. And everybody loves it. 100%. So what we're gonna do is just untwist it real quick. Okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the blade. Okay. Hold it very firm okay. in your hand, and then you're gonna hit it right here. So it's gonna go something like this. Okay, yeah. are you ready for this? This is actually really good. Are you ready? I'm, I'm really nervous. You got it. Ready? Don't worry. Oh, I did it! Oh my god! <laughs> I did it! Ah, I did it! Can I drink it? Yeah. Oh my god, I'm so proud of myself right now. Wow, that was so cool! I know, right? That was so cool! Yes, it was. <laughs> I am so happy! <laughs> I'm never opening it any other way. It's like they know me so well. But before we toast to Tinseltown's winners, my envelope says the award goes to LA Unscripted's Glam Squad.
This is Hasleti Guzman from Bo Chaos Salon in Pasadena. She does the best. What are we doing today? Today we're getting ready for the Oscars. Of course. You'll be beautiful in that gown. So I'm trying to recreate like a siren from the 1940s. Ooh. With what I said, it's gorgeous. You're gonna be gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna ask you about some trends that we've seen in the past and right. see what you think and if we'll maybe see it again this year. One of the trends I think we saw a lot of in the past few years was this strong bob, like Charlize. Yes. Charlize to me in that brunette bob was shocking, but very beautiful, very striking. Mm -hmm. um, but she's always blonde. She's a quintessential yes. blonde. Really. I was very surprised about Serena. Mm -hmm. because she always wear her hair yes. braids and the structures and she came in with this really clean, square bob, and she looked magnificent. She did. Her cheekbones came out. Okay, and so another thing I think we've seen a lot of is it like embellishments in the hair, like oh my God. beading or flowers or, you Ooh, know, like, pita. yes, yes, with the pita. gold the in gold her pita. hair. Yes. She nailed this for Black Panther. Like, that yes. look was so perfect. You know, you've always been a big fan of Jessica Chastain. I could not yes. agree more. Oh my the God. The thing I think she does so well yes. is these like updos. That are loose and fun. Yes, they're not too stiff and, and like stuffy. And that's important because as a woman, if you go get a matronly updo, yes. and you age yourself a decade, um, you have to keep it loose, you have to keep it fun. Yes. Okay, we, we've been fawning over her this entire yes. time. But Zendaya, again, when we talk about the loose <gasps> oh my God, updo, I, you're killing Zendaya. me softly right yeah. here. Like, this is for Dune. And you know what I love also is she's always very appropriate for what yes, she's she nominated for. Yes. Okay, we're done. And if you guys want this look or any look, because Hasblady can do them all, you get a discount code, right? Yes, if they call and mention that they saw us on LA Unscripted, they get 20% off in any service until the end of March. Okay, so we did the hair and makeup, and now it's time for my absolute favorite part, the gowns. And you guys, look at this rack, Anya! Dana! Oh, I'm not worthy! Oh my God, I'm not worthy. This is amazing. Dana, you know this is my favorite part of Oscars. Oh my God. when we get to do this. You this are the Richard Gere to my Julia Roberts, a la Pretty Woman. Okay, I can't even deal with these choices right now. This is amazing. But before we pick a gown, let's talk about what the trends are this season. What are we gonna be seeing, do you think? Okay, I want you to think pink. And we've been seeing a lot of pink. People have been doing pink. But if you remember 1999, Gwyneth Paltrow, oh, GP, yes. Shakespeare in Love with the pink dress, Ralph Lauren, that really started okay. the pink. Really? Now that was a pastel pink, it but was. now we're seeing this bold, vibrant Barbie doll pink in we, your words. We are. My favorite example of a Barbie pink on the Oscars carpet is 2018 Viola Davis. <gasps> yes. But what do you think about black on the red carpet? What are your thoughts? Black on the carpet is great just don't make it basic. Okay. It has to have a twist. Right. It has to have something a la Angelina Jolie with the slit. Okay. Julia Roberts, the year 2001. Yes. The dress, Valentina. And if black is good enough for the divas, oh, we're talking, yes. I'm talking B as in Beyonce and G as in Gaga. Uh -huh. And that was 2005 for Beyonce, 2019 for Gaga. I've seen so much of the metallics, but we're not talking just like, you know, secret. I mean, we're talking like paillettes. Think J-Lo in her long sleeve Tom Ford metallic in 2019. Think Emma Stone who won mm -hmm. in her Givenchy haute couture, right? Metallic, right. head to toe. And then of course, who can forget Sandra Bullock? Oh yes. Metallic. Yes. She won too. Metallics are lucky. Okay, here's your first option. <gasps> you were talking about Barbie doll pink on the red carpet, and it's funny, this was one of the colors of the year, I remember. Like it's it's stunning. It's stunning. And actually, believe it or not, it's so comfortable. Okay, I think we might have a winner. What do you guys think? O M F G. Right? Isn't it Beautiful, I love it so much. Okay, here's the question though. Are we saying yes to the dress? There's a tag here. By the way, I'm not opposed to taking off tags and then putting them back on. But if we're gonna wear this dress, we have to take the tag off. Are we committing? It's like a mattress. Do not remove tag. <laughs> it's illegal. Yes. Take it. Three, two, one. And on
honestly, I think Anya deserves the VIP award and she deserves the Oscar for best stylist because I wasn't the only KTLA -er getting the Style Smart VIP treatment. Jess, Megan. Hi, Anya. Hi, guys. Welcome to my March Madness. The Oscars. It's finally here. I was going to say, I'm really, we're great at basketball, but <laughs> you know what? I say, put me in, coach. There are about seven different designers represented here in this showroom. I love it. We have gowns flown in from New York, from Texas, from Turkey, wow. all over. This is Nardos, oh. and Nardos is known for having those show-stopping moments Ooh. of a gown. Megan, yeah. red hot in Nardos. It's beautiful. Oh, I love this. What? This is Andrea and Leo Couture, okay. this designer. Anya, I feel like an Oscar. Well, you know what? On Oscar Sunday, you could be in a Lair Sundi. Oh. This is your color. I love it. Do you feel Oscar ready? I do. This is a very Oscar kind of dress. Okay, Jess, yeah. my style smart secret. At the end of the night, you can slip in to these dear foam oh my fireside gosh. Yes, slippers, please. which match this they dress. They actually do. Okay, guys, mm. we have some winners. Yeah. Well, I can say this fitting mm -hmm. was a home run. I mean, a slam dunk. Slam dunk. dunk. Slam March, dunk. March Madness. Oh. Remember. And of course, we can't forget about KTLA's golden guys, Sam Rubin and Doug Kolk. Our KTLA red carpet A-team is always live on Oscar Sunday. But our special soiree is just starting to sparkle. Coming up, fashion secrets behind this year's Oscar-nominated costumes, the best place to sip like a star, plus more movie magic from the Beverly Wilshire. And to quote an Academy Award-winning film, here's to the fools that dream. DM us on Instagram if you know the movie. It's been 95 years since the very first Academy Awards, and tonight we're celebrating the golden glow of Oscar, the LAU way. Welcome back to LA Unscripted from the Beverly Wilshire, a Four Seasons Hotel with the best seat in the house, the penthouse. Yeah, we, we have the opportunity in some of our larger suites here to, uh, in fact, our penthouse suite um, has a media room, so we're, we're able to, uh, to do some sort of private showings up there, which is great. It's up on the 14th floor, it's one of the largest suites in, uh, in LA, so to be able to offer that inside of the suite, it's something very unique. And what would a film be without its wardrobe? If the clothes make the man or woman, then this next spot deserves a standing ovation for spilling some big screen style secrets for LAU. That's right, Dana. We're here at FIDM Museum's The Art of Costume Design in Film Exhibition. We're just not going behind the scenes. I'm gonna take you behind the scenes. Here at FIDM Museum, and this is the Art of Costume Design in Film Exhibition. So if you love movies, motion picture, but especially costumes and costume design, this is the place to be. I'm gonna show you what the real Elvis is like tonight! If you guys love Austin Butler, who doesn't? You're gonna love this exhibition because we've got three costumes from the movie Elvis, designed by Katherine Martin. She even went into some of the archives and found boxes of Elvis's mom's clothes. And she said that she looked at them and she said they were rather sad. You could almost feel out who this woman was. And so it's just amazing to know all that backstory. You know, many, many actors say that they really don't get into the part, don't get into the character until they have the fittings, the costumes. They all of a sudden, it's like this, ah, and they turn into that. So you can only imagine. The new Black Panther, 
Ruthie Carter said that she made it especially for Letitia Wright, for the character of Shuri. Letitia's body, her long physique, so you notice this Black Panther costume has a longer physique, a longer neck. The helmet, it's got dots. Why? Because you notice that Shuri, the character, has dots on her face. It's the face painting, so it's then pushed on to the helmet. One of my favorite costumes from this film is that costume, the purple gown that Angela Bassett wears. It's when she comes and enters the United Nations. It's this gorgeous purple velvet gown with gold embroidery, and it features a 3D headdress. In addition to the Oscar nominees, we also have a lot of other costumes from your favorite films, including the blockbuster, Top Gun, Maverick. Marlene Stewart, who's the costume designer, this flight jacket she calls the Franken jacket. Why? Because it's got a sleeve from here, a jacket from here, a collar from here. It took months to make. And the jumpsuits, well, I've got some inside dish. This one right here from Miles Teller, hot. It's lined in cashmere, because of course, Miles' body needs to be touching cashmere. Avatar is one of my favorites here. The detail of the costumes. I mean, you think, wait, that movie's all digital. But no, the costume designer had to create every single costume for every live action actor. The exhibition runs until May 6th, and the best part, as always, it's free. <laughs> And remember, KTLA is always live on Oscar Sunday, but our night of fancy fun continues right here. Coming up, sip, shake, and stir with the top nominees. Ellie Unscripted's Oscar special will be right back. glam and award shows go hand in hand. But did you know the most expensive jewelry ever worn at the Oscars was in 2019 by Lady Gaga? Her Tiffany diamond necklace was worth $30 million. Talk about a hefty price tag. But you know what's priceless? Having style smart Anya Sar as your red carpet weapon. Dana, you know I get so excited she about does. the gowns. But do you know my favorite part of the award shows? No. It's all the behind the scenes photos that the celebs post before they hit the carpet. Like, you know, the stuff that show they're just like us. You know what, that is true. So I remember seeing Glenn Close getting her glam on with a glass of whiskey in her hand. And I was like, go Glenn. And Alana Haim from Licorice Pizza doing a face mask in the car on the way to the event. Well, we've got the room service, so I think we need to have our own little BTS moment. 100%. Ready? Let's do it. Okay. Oh my God. Oh be... my God. This veggie burger Ready? is about to get destroyed. Okay. Okay, here we go. In frame. Yep, that's a winner. Oh my gosh, love it. It was so good. Post it. And while we may have perfected our golden close up, if you want to toast to the night's biggest picture nominees, order up at KTLA's official Oscar headquarters for some signature sips. We are here at H Square, named after Hollywood and Highland, where we're located. And really, this is the gem of uh, the Lowe's Hollywood Hotel. So we have cocktails named after the Best Picture nominees. We have our Elvis, Tar, Women Talking, and also Maverick, my personal favorite. Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. You have uh, spicy uh, Patron, which is my personal favorite. Tahine Rim, which is always a really good uh, partner to that. And then really the, the mango. We made the Maverick hoping Maverick drinks the Maverick. Just want to manage the expectations. Women Talking, which is uh, a big fan favorite. We also have Tar. So that's going to be made with uh, kefir lime leaves, which is really unique and Savile Ray rum. And now I'm gonna make for you the Elvis cocktail inspired by the Best Picture nominee, Elvis. Look at the trouble. 
So we're gonna start with Maker's Mark. I think Elvis would approve. Lime juice, ginger syrup. So Chef makes this fresh for us weekly. Apricot liqueur. The Elvis. The awards are just this weekend, but all four of our Best Picture nominee-inspired cocktails are gonna be here all month long. Anya, I gotta say, with all this Oscar excitement, I am pooped. Are we allowed to say pooped? Because I'm pooped. We are, and you are. And Dana, <laughs> I knew you wouldn't last past 7 p.m. True. That's why I am always prepared for everything. She is. Okay, now, I bring my own sheets to a hotel. You know this. We've done this before, right? But guess what? This what? is breaking news. What? A world exclusive. What? Peach Skin Sheets now has a comforter. This is the, oh, it's so soft, I was wondering. This is the brand oh. spanking new Peach Skin Sheets comforter, oversized, it's lightweight, and it's the same soft, soft material that we're used to with all the sheets. World exclusive, Dana, available to order March 12th at peachskinsheets.com. So let's snuggle up. It is the perfect LA, California weight too, by the way, I have to say. All right, who says you can't watch the Oscars in a fancy Andrea and Leo gown at a fancy hotel with your peach skin comforter and champagne? Thank you so much to the Beverly Wilshire for letting us go off script. And where will LA Unscripted end up next? Well, the only way to answer that is with another Oscar fave. Mama always said life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Good night, everyone. Cheers, my love. Cheers.